Today, I will take up the last lecture on laminar flow heat transfer in ducts. And what I am going to consider is the effect of actually varying thermal boundary condition, which is particularly of interest in oil flows, where the Prandtl number is very large and uh, the thermal development length is considerably bigger than the velocity development length. In this sort of situations, the actually varying wall temperature as well as actually varying heat flux have a profound effect on the manner in which the heat transfer coefficient changes or varies with the actual distance. So, for example, let us consider the solution that we had obtained for Prandtl number very, very greater than 1. Now, that solution was obtained for uh, T equal to T w from x equal to 0, but today I am going to consider the case of uh, heat transfer begin from x equal to x naught. Before that, the wall temperature is same as the inlet fluid temperature. So, in fact, we can view our earlier solution of lecture 18 as a step function in T w minus T i, the T i is inlet temperature at x equal to x naught. And therefore, for x greater than x naught, I may write T minus T i equal to 1 minus theta x star minus x naught star y star T w minus T i. And theta you will recall was uh, defined as T minus T w over T i minus T w. So, just as we considered the external boundary layer situation, for the internal boundary layer situation, it would be, it would again look like this. So, therefore, for arbitrary variation of T w, we will have uh, T minus T i equal to 0 to x star 1 minus theta x star minus x naught star y star d T w by d x naught star d x naught star. This would be for the continuous part of the variation. And, uh, this would be 1 minus uh, theta x star minus x naught k y star delta T w minus T i sub k. This would be for the discontinuous part of the solution. This is exactly following what we did uh, in the case of external boundary layers. So, therefore, the heat flux response would be q w star and I am now considering the case of flow between parallel plates separated by distance 2 b, then that would be equal to q wall x star would be equal to k d t d y at the wall y equal to b equal to k my by b d t by d y star y equal to y star equal to 1. And that would read as uh, theta dash here is d theta by d y x star x naught star 1 by where y star is equal to 1. And this will be for the continuous part and this would be for the discontinuous part. This is simply a differentiation of this equation with respect to y, but you will recall that from lecture 19 we had found that theta dash 1 is actually equal to minus n some n equal to 0 to infinity a n exponential of minus 8 by 3 lambda n square x star equal to a n equal to minus c n y n dash 1 where C n and y n dash 1 were tabulated in lecture 19. So, we are going to use the same coefficients a n in this series. Lambda values too were tabulated in lecture 19. So, if I substitute that in here for that, I would get uh, the heat flux response to arbitrary variation of T w along the wall. So, Q w x star would become k by b 0 to x star n equal to 0 to infinity and this function which is written for x star minus x naught star d t w by d x naught star and this would be for the this would be for the discontinuous part. The summation goes from n equal to 0 to infinity over n and uh, for the number of steps a k equal to 1 to n k. Now, the T bulk minus T i would obviously be equal to 4 b by k integral 0 to x star q wall x star d x star and uh, this is simply from the heat balance and therefore, the Nusselt number would be given by uh, q wall x star 
divided by T wall minus T bulk x star 4 B by K, where T wall minus T bulk is written as T wall minus T i plus uh, or minus T bulk minus T i and this is given and this is what we have evaluated just now. So, T wall minus T bulk is written in the fashion I have shown here. So, that is how one gets T wall minus T bulk at any x star. So, let us move on to a problem in which I am going to consider let us say there are two parallel plates separated by distance 2 b and right at the fluid enters at T i at x equal to 0 itself there is a jump and then the temperature is linear. So, therefore, T w minus T i this is T w equal to a plus b x star and a is the jump at x equal to or x naught this is the jump at x naught star equal to 0 in this case. So, let us see how the equations develop. So, if I were to substitute this variation of T w minus T i in uh, the previous expression here. So, d t w by d x naught star would be simply capital B. So, that is what this would be and the integration of that with B here. So, B simply is a constant and it would come out and the integration of this equation with x naught equal to 0 would, would be given by a n by lambda n square 1 minus exponential of minus 8 by 3 lambda n square x square. Plus of course, we must add the step jump right at x naught equal to 0 which is the entrance. So, that will be plus a times n minus 0 equal to infinity a n exponential of minus n lambda n square uh, x star. Now, of course, there are no other step jumps in this and therefore, this one uh, there is a continuous right along and there are no further step jumps. So, it is a simple case. So, once you have obtained q wall in this manner, T wall minus T bulk would simply be given by 9 b by 16 a n by lambda n 4. You can see that here T b minus T i which is an integral of q wall x star. So, I have used that and added T wall minus T i then they will get 9 b by 16 n equal to 0 to infinity a n by lambda n 4 uh, and this term plus the step jump part which is that. So, as a result you will get n u x equal to 4 q wall 4 b divided by k into t wall minus t bulk, but notice one thing that as x tends to infinity you will see that term will go to 0. So, will that term go to 0. So, therefore, T wall minus T bulk would be simply 9 B by 16 n equal to 0 to infinity a n by lambda n 4 and likewise Q wall x star would be simply uh, the for a n by lambda n square this term going to 0 and this term equal to 0. Now, of course, when what it shows therefore, is that the bulk temperature is also going to vary linearly after a long time after a long time although initially it may vary in an arbitrary manner, but after a long time T wall minus T bulk maintains a constant difference and therefore, this would at this point onwards it would be a case of constant heat flux. It will be a case of constant heat flux at the wall and that is what we find 8 by 3 n equal to 0 to infinity 0 to infinity and that would be equal to 8.235. This would be the general case if we were to go to infinity, we have verified that the, the solution obtained appears at least correct in the infinity state. Now, I am going to assign some values to a and b and see what happens. On this slide, I consider a case of T wall minus T bulk equal to 1 minus 5 x star. So, therefore, the wall temperature declines 
as x increases. So, you can see that here this is the variation of wall temperature on the graph that is shown and the values are assigned are these. I have gone up to when uh, T wall minus T i that is the, the wall temperature reduces back to the inlet temperature. The initial jump of course, is A equal to 1 and it reduces to minus. So, at x star equal to 0.2, the temperature of the wall is same as that of the inlet fluid. You can see T wall decreases. What happens to T bulk? T bulk as you can see on this graph first increases, T bulk increases as you can see here and then its rate of increase is somewhat slowed down to uh, this is the one that is shown by dotted line. So, T bulk increases to 0 0.32, 0 0.39, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 at about point, point 0.12 it is same as 0.4 and then begins to decrease when the wall temperature becomes equal to inlet fluid temperature the bulk temperature at that point is 0.27. Notice what happens to Q wall. Q wall is of course, because T wall is greater than inlet fluid temperature initially Q wall is positive 8.7 reduces to 0.73 at x star equal to 0.05 reduces to 0.1 and in fact, there is one point at 0.11 where there is no heat transfer that means, this situation becomes adiabatic and then Q wall changes sign that means, the bulk temperature now is greater than the wall temperature and therefore, you get negative heat fluxes from x star equal to point 0.12 onwards. And what happens to Nusselt number? Well, the Nusselt number as you can see here, the Nusselt number is plotted along there. So, initially the Nusselt number falls as it should uh, for a, any heating case, but then it suddenly drops to a very low value almost minus 66 at x star equal to minus 12 and then suddenly jumps back at 0 0.15 to plus 12.5 and then again reduces down to 9.1 and since I have not computed long enough, I do not see 8.325, but I would if I were to continue in that fashion, but with a negative heat transfer. So, even that is possible. So, indeed strange things happen the wall temperature although is monotonically decreasing linearly decreasing the bulk temperature has a hump at about 0.4 x star equal to point uh, sorry x star equal to point 11 to 2, 0.12 and then there is a decline and turning sign and likewise uh, Nusselt number is declines but it goes negative and then becomes positive so this is a very interesting case of uh, how T bulk overtakes T wall and although Q wall is negative, you still get Nusselt number positive. So, this positive Nusselt number is for negative heat transfer, this positive Nusselt number is for positive heat transfer into the fluid and at this point you get negative heat transfer with negative Nusselt number. So, indeed very, very strange things can happen. One can work out solutions for a variety of uh, a and B values to see what happens. As I said, one could generate these solutions also for a circular tube because as you will recall, the A n and lambda n values remain the same for a circular tube also and therefore, for such a case one can again carry out the integrations that I have shown here and evaluate Nusselt number for circular tube which I shall not show here. But, uh, it can be done and you do indeed get very strange variations of Nusselt number when the wall temperature varies actually. Now, let us consider the case of actual variation of heat flux. Now, this is of a considerable interest in nuclear reactors as I will show a little later. So, from lecture 19 we know that the temperature response for step jump in Q wall at x star equal to x naught star is given by T minus T i Q all B by K. This is the fully developed solution plus this one is the developing part of the solution. 
Remember, recall that we had said psi equal to psi f d plus psi developing and this part is the fully developed part and this part is the developing part. So, writing this equation at y star equal to 1 would give me psi wall equal to 17 by 35 plus 4 by 4 x square plus b n exponential of 8 minus 8 by 3 lambda n x star where b n is c n multiplied by y n 1 which I have taken from 1 uh, I mean y star equal to 1. If I were to take d psi by d x star it will be 4 minus 8 by 3 into all this into lambda n square and so on and so forth. So, here we consider only continuous variation of q w x star uh, I am not going to consider uh, situations in which uh, step jumps in a q wall occur because they are rare. Then the response of the bulk and the wall temperature will be T w minus T i b by k d psi by d x not star q wall x not star d x not star and that would be essentially equal to b by k equal to all that that we derived on the previous slide into q wall x not star d x star and T bulk minus T i would of course again be q 4 b by k 0 to x star q wall x not star d x not star and therefore, the Nusselt number would be q wall x star divided by t wall minus t bulk simply take a difference of these two quantities and multiplied by 4 b by k for flow between parallel plates. So, in nuclear reactors is quite common. So, consider flow between parallel plates and these are the nuclear fuel elements. and let us say this is 2 b. In fact, the earliest uh, nuclear fuel elements were in fact flat sheets and not the circular rods that we find today and uh, the coolant would be C O 2 at in the earliest nuclear reactor built. Let us say we have this 2 b nuclear fuel elements uh, generate generally heat in this fashion sinusoidally. So, q wall would be q wall max let us say this is q wall max equal to sin pi x by L where L is the length of the of the channel through which the coolant is flowing. So, I am going to consider this particular case because of its relevance to nuclear reactors. So, as I said q wall over q wall max is let us say sin by a x by l where l is the channel length then you will see T b minus T i q wall b by k would be simply 0 to x star 4 sin pi x naught star by l star uh, d x naught stars. So, that gives us the value of T bulk at any x star would be simply given by that and uh, T wall minus T i would be given in this fashion this is the 4 x sin x pi x naught star d x naught star minus 8 by 3 all this and that would equal 4 l star by pi cos pi x star by l star. This integration requires little effort because it is a product of exponential term and a sign term. So, the, the result is you get uh, a very big bracket here with b n 1 plus uh, 3 pi by 8 lambda n square L star whole square into sin pi x star by L star exponential of that term plus this term cos pi x star by L star exponential of minus 8 by 3 lambda n square x star uh, minus 1. So, we have now obtained uh, the variation of bulk temperature along, along the duct and we have obtained a variation of wall temperature along the duct and therefore, we can calculate the Nusselt number as, as it is shown here. So, T wall minus T bulk would simply be different from the previous two slides and that would read in this fashion and we then apply N u x is equal to Q wall x which, which has been specified sin pi x right, 4 times because hydraulic diameter is 4 b uh, and T wall minus T bulk into all this Q wall max b by k. The values of lambda n and b n for constant heat flux cases were of course, given in lecture number 19. 
So, see now what happens. So, you can see the first column here and I have taken q wall max equal to 1 for uh, convenience and uh, x by L values I have taken are these uh, from 0 to 1. The heat flux of course, according to the sign function would vary in this fashion. It reaches maximum of 0.5 at uh, I mean uh, of 1 at uh, x by L equal to 0.5 and then again drops down to a 0 value. So, that is what has been shown here that the T wall is given in this fashion. Notice how T bulk varies. T bulk starts off with 0 at the inlet because that is when where the inlet fluid temperature it enters in inlet fluid temperature and then it begins to rise. It is not a linear rise although in the central part it is linear where Q wall is, is nearly constant and therefore T bulk varies more or less linearly in the linear part, but then earlier it is uh, not nonlinear and so is towards the end it is nonlinear. Most importantly see how the wall temperature varies. The wall temperature increases uh, from there, it changes the slope a little bit uh, and then rises again to that value. Uh, this is the wall temperature variation. And therefore, the set number divided by 4 for convenience uh, to get a proper scaling here. You will see the set number peaks at 1 at x by L equal to 0.5 at 1.87 as you can see, but then decreases down to 0, down to 0. So, the maximum set number is 7.48 and it occurs at 0.5 where Q wall max occurs, but T wall max and T bulk max continue to increase till x y L equal to 0 0.95 and this problem is of relevance to nuclear reactors. Again, we can use the constants given in lecture 19 for flow in a circular tube. So, you can see that uh, uh, if we were to assume simply that wall temperature was constant, we would get a very wrong picture of what happens, but because we have assumed a sine function, we get a T bulk and T wall variation which are different from what it would be if we had a linear constant distribution of constant wall heat flux. So, in summary I would say we have considered fully developed heat transfer in circular tube and annuli and parallel plates. We have also presented general method for flow and heat transfer in singly connected ducts of arbitrary cross section and arbitrary variation of T w, Q w and H w. We have also presented developing flow heat transfer solutions for circular tube and parallel plates for Q wall equal to constant and T w equal to constant for the entire range of Prandtl numbers. And then finally, we extrapolated these solutions to situations involving arbitrary axial variations of heat flux and wall temperature. Of course, I will buy it for flow between parallel plates and or circular tubes. However, for complex ducts, it is best to adopt the computational fluid dynamic uh, technique and obtain the solutions. So, with this I complete my discussion on laminar flow heat transfer. We have considered a typical case of what happens in the developing flow region uh, and considered the fully developed flow situations and learn to obtain friction factor and also number product for fully developed flows in ducts of arbitrary cross section. And then we extended that to the situation of fully developed heat transfer in ducts of arbitrary cross section with arbitrary variations of thermal boundary conditions. We found that for fully developed heat transfer as well as fully developed flow uh, situation, you could use Fourier series methods or Kantorovich variational methods, but we found that the general method based on conversion of the Poisson equations to Laplace equations turns out to be very general and can be applied to variety of ducts uh, including regularly shaped ducts 
as well as arbitrary variation of boundary conditions along the circumference. And finally, in today's lecture, I indicated how solutions of constant wall heat flux and constant wall temperature that were obtained could be extended. The wall temperature and heat flux varies actually. So, with this I complete uh, my discussion on laminar duct flow heat transfer and from next lecture onwards we will be moving on to turbulent flow and heat transfer. Thank you.